We had so many years without government. We had grown a very prosperous economy. We were an industrial society. We had a high savings rate. The economy got screwed up during the 1920s by the newly created Federal Reserve and the monetary policy that they pursued. But beneath the surface, beneath that bubble, was a sound economy. So we could afford all the mistakes that Roosevelt made. We would have been better off without them. And Hoover, too. It's not just Roosevelt. Hoover made. Hoover actually set the president precedent for what Roosevelt did. You know, in a way, George Bush is our Hoover. And he's laid the foundation for Barack Obama, who is the new Roosevelt. But, you know, even though we can afford all those gigantic mistakes, it would have been much better off had we not made them. You know, a lot of people think that the reason we got out of the Great Depression was because Roosevelt saved us. Right? They don't realize that the Great Depression lasted for over a decade. It actually went all the way through the Second World War. Uh, but Roosevelt didn't get us out of the Depression. He helped create the Depression. Had Roosevelt never done all the things that he did, there would have, we would have been out of it sooner. We got out of it despite what Roosevelt did. But a lot of uh, his historians who are very revisionist in the way they see things, and they also have, have an agenda. They want to believe that the government did this. They want to believe that there's something inherently wrong with capitalism, that it can't work unless government is there uh, to right the wrongs uh, of, of capitalism. But, you know, they, they make this faulty logic where they just simply assume we had a depression, we had the New Deal, we got out of the depression, therefore it was the New Deal that got us out. They don't know what would have happened had that New Deal never been dealt. So, but from everybody's perspective today, that's what we need to do. You know, we need more government. We're now in the greatest recession since the Great Depression, and since it was Roosevelt's New Deal that got us out, we need our own version of the New Deal to get out of this uh, downturn. And that's a very dangerous way of thinking, especially now, as I said, given the fact that the fundamentals of the economy today are worse than they were back then. We're no longer, you know, the self-reliant, uh, industrious uh, economy that we were. We are, you know, in debt, we are the world's biggest debtor. We have huge uh, trade deficits. We have no domestic savings. We have an enormous government. We have this huge service sector, a government economy. We're, you know, we're, we're not producing enough. And the economy is all screwed up. Meanwhile, the government is already huge, and we're already paying high taxes. I mean, everybody in this country is paying Social Security taxes, income taxes, sales taxes, state taxes. You know, taxes are already high. And government is even bigger. I mean, even with all the taxes we're paying, government, government is even bigger than that. They're running deficits. So the government is absolutely enormous compared to where it was. In, uh, I think uh, Roosevelt's last budget was like $8 billion. That was double Hoover's budget of about $4 billion. Our budget now is over $3 trillion. If, even if you adjusted for inflation, the, the, the dollar's lost about 95% of its value. So if you take, if you multiply eight by twenty, if we did, if the, the government had just kind of grown with inflation, the budget would be one hundred and sixty billion dollars. You know, it, from where it was at the end of Roosevelt's New Deal. So the government is huge. How can we possibly expand it? Who, how can we afford it? How could the, how could our economy sustain more government? I mean, we can. The only reason we're sustaining the government we have now is because the Chinese are lending us the money, or the Japanese are, gonna, are lending us the money. But how is anybody going to lend us money to afford, you know, Obama's socialized health care or whatever other gimmicks or you know that the government is going to try to finance because they think there's a problem that the government can solve? So we, we're now in a situation that has the potential of being worse than the Depression. And given our approach to solving the problem, that's very that's more likely than not. And probably, you know, one of the more, most disturbing aspects of it is the people who are in charge of solving this problem in government are the people who caused it. And, and they're the people who, who didn't even realize that they were causing it. There are people, you know, as late I was going on these, these television shows or talking to other economists or people, market strategists, you know, this, even, even in early 2008, they couldn't see this coming. They were, they were saying there was, there was no recession coming. We, have, we were already in one, and they couldn't figure it out. So if they don't understand how the economy got so screwed up in the first place, how do we expect them to, you know, to solve the problems? 
And, and, and the major problem is they don't understand what went wrong. Most people look at the circumstances and they see that, oh, the problem is Americans aren't spending money anymore. See, during the good times, we were spending a lot of money and everything was great. And they think it's simply a function of getting us to spend money again. And all of a sudden, the economy is going to be, you know, roaring. Well, they don't understand that the reason we're in trouble is because of all that spending. You know, the economy wasn't strong because we were spending. We were spending because the economy was strong, but not, not, not our economy. It was China's economy that was strong. That's why we were spending, because they were making all the stuff for us to buy. And they were lending us all the money to do it. The fact that we were spending all this money didn't mean that we had a strong economy. Meanwhile, while we were spending all this money, everybody, nobody looked at all the liabilities that we were running up. I mean, sure, anybody can go out and buy stuff if you don't care what it costs. You, know, you don't look at your credit card bills. But to say that you're prosperous because you're spending money and not look at all the, the liabilities that you're accumulating in the process. You know, even right now, you know, we've got this last quarter, GDP grew by an annualized rate of 3.5%, and everybody's all excited. But how, how, how much debt did we accumulate during that quarter to buy that little bit increase in GDP. Can we, do we really think we're better off because we accumulated trillions of dollars of debt to get this little bounce in, in, in GDP? You know, in a corporation, a corporation can say, you know, this, look, look I, I had a good quarter. I earned, you know, I earned this, this, this profit growth. And so, but wait a minute, but what about all that money that you borrowed during the quarter? If you look at the whole balance sheet, the company can be worse off. They may, they, maybe they got, a, you know, an extra 10 million in profits, but they, they, they borrowed 100 million to do it. They didn't really make any money. The same thing is going on with our economy. So people think that all we've got to do is get, is get the spending going. And they don't realize that in order to solve the problems, we have to stop spending. We have to actually do the opposite of spending. We have to, we have to save. We have to not buy stuff. And, but when I say that, well, people stop spending, well, then people might lose jobs uh, in, 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 in retail. Well, you know what? That's got to happen because that means there's too many people working in retail. That's the problem. We can't sustain spending when we're broke. Right? And we need to rebuild our savings. You can't, you can't do that unless you stop spending. You can't spend and save the same money. It's either or. And we, we need to rebuild our savings so the economy can actually grow. Because economies don't grow because you spend. You spend because the economy grows. But what makes the economy grow is underconsumption, is savings. Because savings is what makes it possible for capital to be formed, for businesses to start, for, for, for products to be produced, for jobs to be created. It all depends on capital, which all depends on savings. And, but the government wants to kind of maintain the spending because they don't want the economy to contract in a way that would be productive. Now, what a lot of people don't understand, and, again, and it's very difficult, certainly now that I'm in, in, in the world of politics, because I talk a lot about the fact that the recession is necessary, and it is. But people try to spin that as if that means I like the recession. I want people to be out of work. I want people to lose their money. I don't want that to happen. I just recognize that that's what has to happen. I didn't want the bubble to be inflated. That's what I didn't want. See, the people who were upset about the, the bust, they're the very people that were, you know, were, were championing and, and cheerleading the boom. But it was the boom that was the problem. It was when we were spending all this borrowed money. It's when the Federal Reserve, under, under George Bush, when Greenspan lowered interest rates down to 1% and everybody went out and bought houses, that was the problem. When the car companies took all that cheap money and gave 0% financing so people could buy cars, that was the problem. Right? When we were all refinancing our homes and remodeling our kitchens and importing all these gadgets from all around the world, running $60 billion a month trade deficits, that was the problem. But everybody loved that. Politicians loved it. Wall Street loved it. They were cheering that economy. I don't know these shows, they were calling it Goldilocks economy. They thought it was perfect. That was the problem. You know, if we didn't, you know, if, if you can't do the, do, the, do the time, don't do the crime. The crime was that reckless consumption. The, the, the time is going to be the recession that's necessary to fix the problem.